Week nine, day three, um, had another okay night of sleep last night. Uh, last couple of nights, I just haven't gotten fully rested night of sleep, uh, kind of like partial. And even on my Fitbit, like, I think two nights ago, I got maybe half an hour of deep sleep. And then last night, I was like 50 minutes, close to an hour, which is typically under. Usually, I'm at around an hour and a half, close to two hours of deep sleep. So I don't know what it is that's keeping me up in, in the middle of the night, but oh well, I still had a really good chest workout this morning. Tomorrow's legs, which I hate legs, but it's it's important. You can't, you can't just neglect the legs and lift everything and lift for all the other muscle groups in your body because you'll be uh, disproportionate. Your proportions won't be right. Plus, you got big round legs. Everything else is gonna look bigger. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I just stick it out and just really focus on the pain, squeezing the muscle and on the eccentric motion, the concentric motion. So that'll be tomorrow. Um, but I haven't noticed any major difference between last week into this week. Um, maybe just a little bit of brain fog and that could be just due to my protein is getting higher and my fats are getting lower and I'm kind of starting to hit that uh, protein threshold but I'm going to keep going for a few more weeks. I think the basement that my fat calories will be I think is going to be around 95 or 80 grams of fat which to someone that doesn't follow a ketogenic diet that might even sound high to them like 85, 95 grams of fat but someone who does follow a ketogenic diet that's pretty low. And when I do hit that point in a few weeks, I will stop dropping fat. Um, and then at that point, I'll start dropping the protein grams until I get down to the lowest caloric threshold, for which for me could be 1,500 calories, probably 15, 1,600 calories a day. But at that point in time, I'll be adding in two refeeds a week, which that means, and I'll talk more about when I get closer to that, but what that means is, I will be adding an extra meal that will give me more fat and more protein. Um, so that way I'm not just for weeks eating 15, 1600 calories because that could just totally wreck your metabolism. Uh, it's gonna wreck, wreck your hormones, your testosterone, all that stuff. And the refeeds will be there to kind of help a little bit with that hormonal support, but then also give you um, just some extra calories so you're not just feeling like death pretty much so that'll be coming up probably beginning of may i would think i'm i'm probably gonna hit that point maybe at very end of april uh but so far everything's been going just fine um i've had co-workers ask me like what drives you what motivates you to to do something like this and um there, there's a couple factors number one i've wanted to do this for a number of years now and I have failed in the past. Like I've started and then fell off, started and fell off. And I'm tired. I'm tired of it. Um, I'm not getting any younger. I mean, I'm 34. I'll be 35 this July. And it's like now or never. So I'm going to do it. And doing it this way by creating these vlogs and posting it on social media, it holds me accountable. Like I can't stop doing this because if I do, not only... Do I know that I failed, but all of you out there that are watching this, you're going to know I failed too. So I'm sticking with it. I'm going to go all six months of doing this. Um, I'm almost, after tomorrow, I'm a third of the way through. And that is what's holding me accountable. Number two, once you really start to dive into health and nutrition, and you really get behind the weeds and behind all the fronts that big food puts out and the pharmaceutical industry puts out and the big agriculture and, and all those capitalistic groups. And you start really looking at the nitty gritty of stuff. It's amazing as a society how far we've come from just a hundred years ago of what our ancestors would consume. Eat foods that grow in nature. If you do that, 
there's a very high chance you're not going to be overweight, you're not going to be obese, you're not going to have diabetes, you're not going to have these chronic diseases that are plaguing not just our country, but are starting to plague the world. Eating processed and ultra-processed foods will not make you healthy. Now, if 98% of your diet is whole foods grown out of the ground and out of the earth, and you once a month have four Oreos, you're human, you're gonna be fine. But if you're eating a pack of Oreos every day, or a box of Twinkies, or a bag of Doritos, you do that chronically over time, you're, you're just, you're not gonna be healthy. No matter how much you work out, you're, you're just, maybe you look healthy on the outside, but on the inside, you're not gonna look great. And you're still gonna be susceptible to a lot of these metabolic diseases, diabetes, um, uh, heart disease, and, and all these just nasty things. Um, so that, that's one reason that keeps me going. Uh, number two, I wanna set an example for others that you can do this. It's very attainable, it's very doable. And I wanna be that beacon of light to show uh, family members of mine, friends, coworkers, the community at large, that it's possible. It's possible to live a healthy lifestyle in a world that pushes being unhealthy and accepting being overweight and being obese. Um, I'm not trying to fat shame anyone, but if you are overweight, if you are obese, and you're perfectly happy and fine with the way you look and the way you feel, okay, great, good for you. But we shouldn't look at someone like that and think that that is healthy, that is what I should be, because I really, they're not healthy. Now, what's healthy about that point of view is they've accepted and embraced who they are, and they're fine with that. Great, I'm not gonna attack those people. They're perfectly fine. But as a society, I feel that the big food industry and the, the pharmaceutical industry, like they're trying to push us to look like that and to accept it. And now they're trying to push all these um, weight loss surgeries and weight loss drugs and low fat this and low carb this and that. And it's like, what are we doing as a, as a society? Eat the foods that grow out of the ground. I haven't found the wild Oreo tree. It eludes me every day. I never see it in the wild. I'm not going to eat Oreos. If I see a blueberry bush, I'm going to pick the blueberries and eat them. If I see a deer, I'm not a hunter, but if I was... I would harvest it. That's what our ancient ancestors would have done. They didn't die of diabetes. They didn't die of heart disease. They died because they would get wounded out in nature and then they would get infected and they would die from that. So bottom line, that's another thing that drives me is just how Big food, big ag, meaning big agriculture, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical community, how it enrages me and infuriates me that they only care about their bottom dollar. They don't care about our health. So it's up to us to advocate on our own behalves and to do this. So that is what drives me. That's the, the, the force behind all of my healthy lifestyle uh, changes. And that's why I do what I do. I also love exercising. I love working out. I love pushing my body and seeing what my body can do. And because of all of that, it has enlightened me on how my brain just fires and functions. And I think clearly how awesome my sleep is, how f like fit and strong I feel in the gym, it makes me just overall feel like a better person. And there have been times where, yeah, I have a bunch of ice cream or I have a slice or two of cake. It's not all the time, but it happens on rare occasions. And I notice a difference. I feel like 
total crap, total garbage the next day, horrible sleep, and then my workouts are bad. I feel bloated. I just feel gross. And I think if more people would eat healthy for X amount of weeks or months and then do a day of what they typically do by eating ultra processed foods and fast food, they would see. They would see what these things are doing to their body. But when you're consuming this stuff on a regular basis, you don't fully understand what these foods are actually doing to you. I used this analogy before. It's kind of like staying in your house and living in your house and like never leaving. And your house has a weird smell. You don't even notice it because you've been living in your house and you haven't left. Then you went on vacation. So you go on a vacation for two to four weeks to Hawaii. You come back home, you walk through the door and the first thing you go is, what is that smell? And that is what it's like when you're eating unhealthy for most of your life. You're blind to it. Your nose blind to it. But then when you turn the tables and you follow a healthy lifestyle for a certain amount of, again, weeks or months, and then you go back to just doing a normal day of what you used to do, you will notice the difference big time. And I think if more people did that, then more people would stick to a healthier lifestyle. Those are my two cents. Those are my thoughts. And everyone is welcome to have their opinion. That's my personal opinion. Again, I'm not attacking anyone. You do you. You live the life you want to live. I want to live the healthiest life I possibly can. I want to set an example for people. I want to show people it's possible to do this. And most importantly, I want to help people. I want to help and lead by example. I want to help by just showing them and telling them what they need to do, starting with just very simple, basic little things in life to more complex things. So if you are someone that is looking for help in living a healthier lifestyle, please reach out to me. Please comment in the sections below, and I'm more than happy to respond and help you because that's part of our job as being human beings, to help each other. So... That's my little spiel for today. I'm going to get off my soapbox because this video is going on way longer than I intended it to. Uh, but please keep it locked in here on my channel. Please like and subscribe and continue to follow along with me as I go through this 26-week ketogenic bodybuilding prep. I'll see you all tomorrow.